I've just got down from the loft my old Sinclair Cambridge programmable calculator. This was the first sort of programmable calculator school children could really afford. It was very cheap. Um, it's very old though. It's about 40 years old. It came with this amazing book, um, this sort of four volumes of computer programs basically to run on your program, um, uh, on your programs to run on your calculator. I don't think I ever got really beyond volume one, which is general finance and statistics, because that had the games in. Uh, but there were programs, maths programs, really complicated math stuff, physics and engineering. Uh, and volume four was electronics. Lots of really complicated stuff in there. Um, the programs themselves were just entered using the keypad. But oh my goodness, these are the instructions just for entering a computer program um, into your Cambridge calculator. Not run, uh, not writing your own. Just that's how you enter one. Um, so I've had this. It's been sitting in the loft for a long time. So it's about forty years old. I don't think I've used it since I was probably I don't know, twelve, fourteen, something like that. Let's see if it still works. So it runs off a PP3 battery, which goes in this cover in the back. If you look under there, you can see it's got a serial number. It's even got like a hand signature written in the back. It says you have to put a Mallory battery in. I wonder if this counts as a Mallory battery. Right, I'm going to try now and connect my uh, PP3 battery in here, stick it in the back. I'm not gonna try and get the cover back on. And we'll try and turn it on and see if this lives. So this is the first time it's been powered up in about 40 years. Let's, hey, there we go. It lives. There we go. We've got a zero. Let's see if I can do a simple calculation. So if I type 20, 20 oh, it's reset itself. It's like the ZX81 RAM pack all over again. 22, oh, it's reset itself. 22, this is not going to be a massively reliable calculator. So imagine entering a program into this and it keeps going off. 22 divided by 7, and then I press equals, and there we go. It lives. I wonder if I can get it to stay on long enough to enter a program. We'll see. So I can't actually get my Sinclair Cambridge programmable calculator to stay powered on long enough to enter a program. It just seems to keep resetting. There's power issues. So I thought, well, I wonder if it might work a bit better if I took it apart. So that's kind of what I've done. It's finest British engineering here. It proudly says made in England on the back of it. Uh, it's made of very, very flimsy plastic. So if we pull it apart, um, it does come apart quite easily. I mean, it's slightly broken as it is, but there's the cover. It's got that very tasteful fetching purple plastic on it to make the uh, to hide the LEDs. But actually, when you pull it all apart and you get that's the battery sits in there. The PP3 battery sits in that. It's incredibly thin. I guess that's vacuum from plastic. Um, and there's the board. It had um, a socket there. You can power it from uh, a DC power supply. And here's the board itself. And it does seem to work a bit better if I just completely take it out. So I might have a go. Uh, uh, programming it like this. So there we go. There's the front. There's the keypad. And do you want to see what's inside it? What actually makes it tick? It's basically one chip. There we go. In all its glory, what is there? There's one chip there. That's the calculator chip. I'm going to have a look up and see where that came from. Can't see what's written on it, but I guess that's an off-the-shelf calculator chip. There's another chip there and a capacitor. I wonder if that's something to do with power management and uh, a ribbon cable that goes onto the display and that is it it's a very very simple machine please hang up and try again